Okay, here we are back inside Mega Gold once again. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you find the videos helpful you and useful in your designing process. If you do, please go ahead and smash that subscription button, tap on that notification bell, leave me a like and a comment. And if you want to buy me some coffee, right down in here, there's a super thanks button. You can tap on that. Uh, sorry, I've been MIA for our last uh, couple weeks. Uh, had some personal, uh, tragic personal. Uh, issues of dealing with and uh, then I got sick and I'm still just fighting uh, through it uh, but uh, I hope to get back on uh, regularly as soon as possible uh, just trying to work through this uh, cold that I got after <laughs> uh, everything that happened the last uh, month or so so uh, bear with me I apologize uh, but uh, we had a post in the Facebook group on an anonymous post on something like this and how to get that little edge there uh, and I, th I believe uh, he found or he or she I'm not sure found a way of getting this edge but then when they go to cut this out they're having some issues with that so real quick uh, you know just make a disc put a bezel on it and then uh, whatever design work they're going to do from there uh, not sure if I have other content up about this. I know I have some kind of type, like Jolly and stuff like that, but I'm not sure I really did this. Uh, so real quick, let's go ahead and dive into this. Uh, first thing we're going to do is go ahead and grab our uh, circle command there, go to creation, go to uh, F4 right there, and we'll just kind of whatever, you know, out there, right? Uh, and then from here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and go from uh, pick my curve or line curve again, go from uh, uh, F4 center of the universe, and then I'll hold down shift and kind of determine how high up I want it. I have my grid snaps off, so it's uh, not real choppy. It's not going to be snap into a bunch of different things. I can kind of pick my length or I can go ahead and just come down here in my command line, just type in the distance I want. I'm just going to go ahead and say I want something like this here. Uh, then I'll go ahead and grab me an arc uh, direction, third one down and click here and we'll go. We got our in snaps on. Uh, so that's uh, filter selection. Our O snaps are right here. This is uh, M8. So it's set up a little bit different down here. And there's uh, I think I put up some content not too long ago about uh, this in here, uh, which is really cool to be able to use. So maybe check that out. Uh, so I have my in snaps on and I have my uh, quad snaps on. So I'll go up here and go to that end. And then we'll just go over here to this quad here and click. And then I'll just kind of get the, I can hold down shift and it'll give me a nice uh, curve or I can adjust it however I want. I'm just gonna hold down shift and click on that, right? Uh, then I'm going to go to my uh, surface and go to my rail uh, revolve command, right? And I'll just do the revolve and select my curve to revolve. That'll be this one here. Uh, and then I'll hit enter as it says in the command line. I select uh, the re revolve axis, which will be my little line there, right there to the bottom and to the top, right? And it has zero there and I'll hit enter and then I'll th 360, uh, hit enter, right? So now I have uh, this uh, surface here going around and if I'll give it some shading and we can see that we now have a surface similar to his. Uh, I'm not sure how you laid that out. But uh, you got a lot of ISO curves on that. As you can see, mine are a lot less. When you do the revolve, you're only getting them in the quads. So uh, if you want those extra ISO curves, I guess that's fine. Uh, the easiest way to do this would just be to go ahead and select that. Uh, so, and then with your gumball, you know, go to your maybe your front. And you can uh, hold Alt and then click on your gumball. And you can type in a distance or you can hold Alt and just drag it down however far you want. And you have that second surface there, right? Now I'll just go ahead and we'll switch to another color here. I'll go here and we'll just go ahead and get rid of those curves so they're not in the way anymore, right? Uh, I believe you tried loft, it said somewhere in your message there for this. I don't know why it didn't work for you, uh, but maybe uh, you didn't go through the entire process. So we'll just stick with the... Par There's a lot of ways, so I'll show a bunch of different ways of doing this. So I'll just go to the parametric loft, right? Uh, and it's select curve points, right? So uh, select there, so there, and then I'll hit uh, enter. And it just gives me that. And at this point, you might think, oh, no, it blew on me, and you try to back out. Don't. Just hit enter. 
and there you go. Uh, now, uh, it keeps it in an open surface, though. So if you want to keep parametric and all that, you'll have to select it all and go to your uh, tools and then uh, select uh, Join from here and then hit Enter. And now you should have all those surfaces along with the poly surface. We'll take the poly surface. We'll change to this color here and uh, we'll click off it and then we'll turn off our Oh, I can't. There we go. We'll turn off that. And now we have a closed poly surface out there. I'm not sure why it gave you, uh, it, why it didn't do that for you. Um, yeah, you don't really, uh, used to have to dupe those edges, but, uh, for some reason it's, it's doing okay with, uh, out duping them. Uh, as you can just see uh, now you know these edges are real sharp uh, there is one thing I'll just go ahead and throw in for you uh, you can come down here to um, fillet edge solid right you're in solid because we have a solid piece here if now if they were uh, all uh, uh, unjoined let's see let's uh, explode it so if they were if they're exploded you know they're not joined together you go to your surface fillet edges right uh fillet uh edges and then you can pick two surfaces and uh, adjust them however you want to adjust right uh, which is really cool uh so you can adjust them like that uh, let me go ahead and cancel out of that uh or if they're all joined together uh so let's uh well let's go back to our tools because we want to make sure we keep everything there and we'll hit enter so we have those individual pieces again <laughs> which i just threw out there so i'm just going to go ahead and turn these back on here real quick i'm going to select all those and i'll new uh, delete them and now we have uh, the individual pieces and we should have the solid in there too maybe no Okay, they're all individual, so we'll just select them all, and then we'll just join them together and hit enter, and then we'll just grab all these pieces here and then uh, pitch them. We don't need them, or if you wanted to, you could hide them or whatever. And now we're back to varies. Okay, <laughs> uh, po uh, poly uh, surface, right? So the three different segments, the top, the edge, and the bottom. Uh, and then you can also go to your... Uh, solids right because now we have a solid closed poly surface uh so if they're not joined to if it's not a solid they're all individual you want to do the uh surface fillet uh and but if they're all joined together you can do the uh fillet edges in the solid menu right so uh fillet edge right here and then we want to select the edge that we want to fill it and then it has one there uh and then enter and then enter uh so we have the one you can always adjust that too so let me back out of that just to make sure everyone's aware of that uh so i'll right click to bring back the fillet edge command right here right and i'll so first thing i'll do is preview yes uh, and then I'll select that edge and it's set at one and then I'll just go ahead and hit enter. Uh, so now it's staying out there, right? It's not just, my command's not just disappearing. Now I could take this and I can uh, play around with it, uh, you know, if I wanted to. So I can get different, uh, you know, just that handle right there. I can drag that handle to get different uh, fillets sizes right uh, or i could come down here and set all and type in maybe a 0.5 which is probably the easiest way to do it and then hit enter you're still going to get the preview if you don't like it you can go back down here set reset all uh go in type point maybe 75 uh, and then hit enter and you still you can keep on adjusting uh, accordingly and then we'll just go ahead and hit enter so now we have a, a solid piece uh, that is all there, right? Now he or she had a, uh, a bezel, probably a gemstone in the center there. So let's real quickly, let's do uh, show this because I guess there was some issues during the Boolean process. Uh, so let's go ahead and just grab a gem. And it's buried in our item there. And the first thing we'll do is we'll just kind of drag it up. Uh, let's go ahead and go to shaded so we can kind of see what's going on out here. And we don't need it maybe that big. Maybe something, I don't know, something like a half carat 0.5 or 5 millimeter. 
five millimeter half carat and we'll just go ahead and say that's okay we can always come back and modify that anytime because it's in our dynamic commands right uh, so we'll just select that and we'll just go to uh, settings and we'll just slap a bezel on there and we can adjust this all day long we can put a, a, a chamfer on it and then you know to get a little bit better I, I like kind of like the chamfer a little bit uh, and our we can make that a uh, a tighter chamfer uh, we can make it a little bit more angle drop it down there's all kind of things we can do there uh, and we have it going all the way through there which is probably not exactly what we want so I'm going to take it up so it's just sticking out there uh, and then maybe eh, it looks okay really uh, yeah uh, so we'll just go ahead and say that's what I want and we'll just go ahead and hit enter right okay so we have our little kind of item out there like that right uh so what we can do is we're going to uh go to now this is a solid surface or it should be yeah closed poly surface and then our bezel is a closed poly surface so we just go to our solids command uh and we'll go to, to uh boolean uh difference right and we'll select this as our first surface enter this is our second surf second surface enter and then enter uh and our bezel disappeared which is a major bummer but we can probably come back over here and just go to show and there's our bezel back again right as soon as it there we go all right so i'm going to go ahead and hide our uh bezel and then i'm going to hide our gemstone right uh and we have two poly surfaces out here so the first one it, there's no cut in you can see it all the white lines there right if i go to the second one we can see there's a cut there so i'm going to take the first one and if we delete it that's no problem and we have this right and it leaves that little piece in the center sometimes and not always but sometimes it does uh, you can just take this uh, go ahead and ungroup it ungroup it and now we can just go ahead and get rid of that right and it broke history so if we don't want to break history we'll just take that and we'll just change it to a gray layer we'll bring back our bezel bring back our gemstone and now if we want to join those together we can go boolean union uh, this is our first service enter this is our second service enter and enter and now we have one everything's all joined together as one and this is ready to go to printing if that's kind of what you're looking for uh, so, uh, you know, maybe you don't want them joined together. Maybe you want to keep them a little separate. You're just going to put a drop a bezel down in there and you're going to do a two tone, which would be pretty cool. So, uh, if we go to our rendering here, right, we'll go, just go to all perspectives here. We'll take this one, go to array traced. Where's ray, ray traced. It's been a while. Sorry. Uh, we'll just select this surface and we'll change it to uh, yellow. And now we have a two-tone and let's go to our rhino properties and i am going to click my little star here and i can activate my denoiser from here so it'll just speed up all that process right uh so i can have a, a two-tone kind of pendant or maybe i'm going to make a dangle earring or something or an earring itself uh something like that so hopefully that uh, answers uh your question for you uh you know uh i'm not sure why that uh didn't work for you on the the loft uh but let's go back real quick i guess but that's real quickly how you can do it and just go back and real quick and show it let's get rid of that too we don't need it uh i'll turn back on my yellow and we'll just go back and do that uh, uh surface uh, uh revolve one more time so revolve from here uh enter and then from there to there, enter, and then 360, enter, and I have my surface right, select that, uh, hold down Alt, drop it down to whatever you want, so I get a, a dupe of it, boom, boom, uh, and let's go ahead and take that yellow and hide it. And like many people said, you could do a sweep, right? So all, basically all you have to do is go grab a curve uh, and we'll change that to this red color here. And with my quads on, right, it's going to go ahead and snap to that quad and that quad. And then I can go to a surface uh, 
Uh, ooh, that may not sweep because we don't have the rails. Uh, one, yeah, see, it won't sweep because we don't have the rails, right? Uh, with the dynamic commands. It'll definitely sweep if we go to the non-parametric uh, sweep too. Select that edge, select this edge, and then select that profile. And we have our item there, right, going around, right? So uh, if you don't want to, if, if the parametric's not something you're really worried about, uh, you can go ahead and select do it that way right uh, so that's uh, one way to do it and another way would be to blend of course uh, blend from uh, this edge here to this edge here and then right click and now you got a blend but you can always uh, change it from uh, curvature to tangency if you lock these you can kind of move them around to whatever uh, you know domey type shape you want or you could just go to uh, position which will be you know one one to two right it'll just go straight down and you can go ahead and take that as well so there's a ton of different ways and there's even more than you know this here what you can do too you can go back in and do your uh, fillet edges you know select that edge maybe both edges at one time preview yes uh, and then go ahead and enter and that one blue because they're too big so all we do is go to uh, select enter and let's just go to a point a four hit enter we got a preview of a point four so that's kind of what's going to look like you could take that uh, and that you're still in a closed poly surface put your bezel in there and go ahead and do the rest of it right uh, so hopefully that kind of uh, helps you uh, give you a little bit more uh, as far as how many options you really do have so uh, Thanks for watching. Good designing. And I apologize for the absence and I'll, I'll try to uh, get more focused. It'll probably still take me a couple more days before I can get back to normal, but uh, I'm getting there. Uh, so my apologies. Uh, good designing and uh, take care, everyone. Thank you very much.